I am Coco. I made this fucking beat. And Bobby <laughs> stole it. I don't even know what happened. Bob! Bob, can I call you Robert? Bobby? I don't know. Get my beat. You can have it. Yo, this is your boy, Romeo, is in the house. Up here with my boy Bobby Tesla at St. Louis Wing Company. We about to do this podcast. We finna talk about everything. A little bit of everything. But hey, we about to do this. He gonna drink. I may drink one. But hey, who knows? <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to St. Louis Chicken Diaries. This is actually the first episode of the new brand. So it was Drunken Chicken Diaries, but I don't expect everybody to sit here and get drunk with me. Actually, <laughs> I do expect them to, but sometimes they disappoint me and they don't. But um, yeah, man, today's a good addition, man. I got my man Jerome Romeo Banks in the house. Yes, um, what time is it? Man. What time is it? That we're gonna talk about more today. Man. <laughs> so, so we got the owner of Romeo's Barbecue Cafe, right? That's yes, sir. Yeah, that's it. And you came in your uniform. I was gonna text you and say wear your Romeo chain because he's got this iced out R <laughs> and his long chain. And this is one of the flyest OGs I know. Like he's got his his suits and these these shiny shoes and like you be dressing, man. Yo, you thank dressing. you. Thank you. You do your thing. <laughs> Um, so, what you guys actually just watched on the YouTube channel was a, a video of you on stage dancing like you're 13 years old, and <laughs> you were clowning up there. So how and like what was the occasion? What was that event? It was my 50th birthday party, and, and I just always want to you know celebrate the big number. Yeah. And when it came, I was like, all right, turning 50. Let me get up here and do what I do. And you did your thing, bro. You did your thing. I wasn't there for that one, but which the, what the one that you had down the street here in Brentwood was? What number was that? Was that fifty five? Fifty five, man. Yes, sir. Damn, you're old. Oh, you All know. Right. So we gotta take a shot to that. Man. I'll Cheers. take a shot of water. Cheers. What do you mean? I'm gonna pour you half a shot, man. I'm gonna pour you half, just because don't don't act like we never drank Tito's together. Well, that's true. We All have. Right. We're but... gonna drink half a shot. <laughs> And then, you know, if you want more after that, just let me know. I got a whole nother gallon right here. (laughs) (laughs) Cheers, man. All right, buddy. All right. right. Yes. There we go. There we go. There we go. The one that I went to, the birthday party that I went to, was your 55th birthday party. And you got up there and did the same thing. I can't even do that. I don't have that much energy now, and I'm 42. And so I'm just really proud of that, man. You really get down on stage, man, in a suit. Yes. You know, I tell you, man, I've been dancing all my life. So it's just Just something you do. Something I do, you know. And when I have free time, I I got drums. I play drums. Yeah. And I'll sit there and just jam out. Or I throw some old school music on and dance. Okay. You know, I just, like what I always said when I was little, you know, when my grandmother and them just take me places, we were, um, she said, baby, get out there and dance. Yeah. And I get out there and I cut the rug. Cut the rug. And I go. And you're, you haven't stopped since. Haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to keep going all the time on a cane. That's, it, you, yeah, you better, man. That's what's up, bro. Like, I, like I, I plan to see you at your 60th birthday party doing the same thing. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. all right, let's talk about let's, so the, the barbecue joint, man. I, I want to get into that, but I want to just kind of get the backstory of you and where you grew up because we're rivals when it comes to sports teams. Because That's you're, true. Because you're, 
you you live Detroit. I breathe it. So talk to me about that. Well, you know, uh, I was born in Detroit, and uh, my mother uh, came to St. Louis. And when she came here, you know, I went to school here. And, you know, Why did and, she come to St. Louis? Well, this is where she met. Uh, the, her family was here, actually. Okay. So her family is here, so she moved here. And um, ever, ever since, you know, I got out of high school, I always go back to Detroit. And then I said, no, nah, I'm going back home to live. Okay. And I stayed, you know, and then I came back here in the 90s. All right. So you've been back in St. Louis since the 90s? Yes, I've okay. been back since the 90s. So, and you still haven't embraced the St. Louis sports. Oh, I support it. I do. It's just. Uh, You're a diehard I, Detroit I love player. my Detroit teams, man. So when, when, the, when the Cardinals were playing the Tigers in the World Series in 2006, you, who were you rooting for? Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, come on. Like, honestly. Oh, I took that to heart, I too. bet you did. Oh, I was like, oh, these motherfuckers. Yeah, suckers, suckers. we got on y'all's ass. Yeah, but, you know. That was a good time. It was that good. Was a good it, time. Was good. it was a good time. I was at the game and we won. I was there with my dad. So then I ended up working for him. Then you ended up working at Bush Stadium. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you so you grew up in Detroit, and I know that you got. I mean, your your heart is is in Detroit, and because you you remind everybody every chance you get. You know, I remember watching a football game with you one time. You had your jersey on. It was Sunday, <laughs> and we were watching a game that wasn't even Detroit, but you still had your Detroit yeah. jersey on. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how did you get into? Man, I want to. I want to. I want to ask you like how you like how you started your your restaurant, but I want to actually get into like how did you get into the hospitality industry, like working in restaurants? Well, in, in high school, we had this. Uh, uh, culinary class okay. it, and we had an actual kitchen it was called the Heroes Hut Okay, and I took I took that class it's like you know I love cooking because you know I got it from my grandmothers they would always cook my uncles they would always be cooking I said you know what I want to do this you know and I took that up man we had the Hero Hut rocking yeah in and, high school in high school <laughs> that's what's up <laughs> and when I left high school, I went to Michigan, back home, and I was my first gig was a restaurant Baker Square. Okay, what were you doing there? I was a line cook. So you started off as a cook. I started yeah. off in a dish tank. Well, honest to God, <laughs> I worked one day washing dishes for some company here in St. Louis back in high school, okay. and I walked out. I said, "This ain't." You got me messed up. I'm not washing no damn dishes. Man, I was that's how I started. I washed dishes. I was fourteen as it was this little Italian restaurant down in Lafayette Square called Ricardo's. That's still there, owned by the same people. I was their dishwasher. And that's how I got the taste of, you know, wanting to be a cook. Cause I would see the cooks, I'm like, damn, these guys are awesome. I right. wanna I wanna do that. Right. Because they made like two dollars more an hour. Right. The girls liked them. Like I I was like, man, I'm just this dirty dish guy. And these guys are over here all cool and stuff. I want to be just like that. Right. So yeah. I just I just worked my way up. So so you started out as a line cook. Yeah, so I was a line cook and then became an assistant uh, cook. I mean, assistant manager and became the manager. And I was floating around restaurants up there in Michigan. Uh, then I ended up waiting tables. Okay. Because it was quick money. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. I, was, I was good at it. Yeah. Then I ended up bartending. So I was, you know, I'm like, oh, okay. But I went back. And start doing the thing I really love is cooking and barbecuing. Because you make more money in the front of the house. You do if you a if, good good bartender or waiter. Yeah, you right, know, right. You know, and I went on the streets of Pontiac and start selling barbecue ribs. Okay. In front of this Q Club in Detroit. In, in Detroit. Okay. It was a club called the Q Club. Okay. It was a pool hall, and uh, I would go out there every once a month, you know, try to sell barbecue. It was okay. It wasn't nothing like, you know, I'm just learning. I'm just, right. But when I came back to St. Louis, I was like, yeah, I got I to gotta stick with this. You okay. Know? I said, I brought some old school barbecue up there. I said, no, I need to, you know, get, get out here in the streets, do these festivals and learn the, the, the re- trade. And, right. So, so, the, so the whole, you, you're, you basically, you're self-taught. Yeah, I mean, you. I mean, I'm sure you worked with guys. And you oh, worked. I worked with some great chefs. Trust right. me. Yeah. I did. yeah, I'm. I'm talking about the barbecue. So you kind of like took what this guy does and what this guy does, and 
just I mean that's what we do as chefs. We like right. take what we know and then we turn it into our own thing. And that's what that's what chefs. I mean that's what we're all about. You know, is our own style. So when um when I met you, you were you were at the um you were doing festivals and stuff. Well, first of all, okay, let me tell you what this show is about. The show is about the subcultures of society. And mm-hmm. it's I saw this this show on YouTube like a couple years ago, and I saw these college kids. They were um, drinking Tito's. <laughs> and uh, I mean, they were just throwing back shots, throwing back shots. And next thing you know, they're drunk as hell. And these are high are college kids, <laughs> drunk as shit. And they're interviewing each other. And it, it was the funniest damn thing I've ever seen. I'm like, <laughs> I have to do that. I'm grown, but there's a kid inside of me that wants to do some really dumb right. shit like that. So I, I did. I, I mean, I thought about it. And then I hooked up with my producer and I told him about it. He's like, man, let's, let's start doing it. Right. This was a, a year and a half ago when I had the idea. So here we are doing it, and I, I think I gravitate towards people that don't really go to college for what they're doing in their life. So anything from being a chef, um, a professional um, athlete, or um, a rapper, a musician, a stripper, mm-hmm. a tattoo artist, right. um, anything that you're passionate about that you that's like a hustle that turned into your career, those are the type of people that I end up becoming friends with. Okay. Now, if you just sit in a cubicle all day and you went to college for six years and your job is to wear khakis and sit on a computer, we don't have anything in common. Right. Because <laughs> exactly. that's just not how I grew up. Right. I grew up in restaurants. I grew up cooking. And that's just who I relate to. So I got to uh, – so are you good there? Yeah, a little all right. jumpy. Okay. <laughs> you can right, push whatever. that down. It's fine. Push it down, bro. Oh, it, it moves? Yeah. I thought, okay. All right, we got there it. There we go. So um, here's a story about me and how Jerome met. You guys ready for this? No. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> His daughter is my ex-girlfriend. What? Uh, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> what you say? So I was dating his daughter, and he didn't like me at first because he didn't know me. And then I remember when I met you. The first day I met you was at the Ameristar. At the, you, you, you guys were coming, we were leaving, and you were really standoffish because I'm, I'm obviously a little bit, little bit older than your daughter, and um, you're a dad, and you don't necessarily want to meet the guy who's dating your daughter ever. Right. So when I met you, you were just like, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, didn't, you really did not want to meet me. And then once you realized that I was going to stick around, you, you knew I was a chef, and I knew you were a chef. And right. I'm just like, man, look, man, I, I got I to gotta talk to this guy and make sure that he's cool with me. So we became cool, and we went to, uh, we went to that barbecue restaurant, uh, Big Baby Q. Yeah. Um, no shout out to Ben Welch, who is now at the Midwestern downtown. Who, uh, that was his spot back then. We met up there, uh, ate some barbecue, and because you had interest in having a spot, right? And um, I was just trying to gain some points at that point and right. get you to like me. <laughs> <laughs> that was slick. <laughs> <laughs> but then after that, you know, we became cool. We went bowling, and uh, uh, oh my god, really, dude? <laughs> <laughs> He's getting phone calls. Uh, so yeah, uh, we just became cool, man. You realized that I was I was a cool guy, and we went bowling, had a couple drinks, and then next thing you know, like I got cool with your whole family, and you guys took me in. Everybody was nice. I mean, yeah, your, yeah. your mom and every all your cousins and nieces and everybody. Like I, only only person I know is Junior, your brother. I mean, I know them all, but I can't remember everybody's name. Right. And right. Shaquilla, your niece. Right. Um. So yeah, I mean, your your family like was was really embraced me. They fed me well. You always feed me good. Whenever I come over, and there was a point in time when Tamia would come home, and you'd be like, "Where's Bobby?" Because <laughs> yeah. I, w- I wouldn't be with her. Yeah. So you'd be like, "Oh no, where's Bobby?" Because so yeah, we became cool. So um, I really respect what you did, and and at that time you were doing these festivals. Yeah, yeah. We were, and you, I saw your setup, man. Like you have this this huge like banner and and the countertop made out of wood and all these portable grills and fryers and yeah i was really impressed because i've i've always worked in kitchens that were you know right and you were mobile and i'm just like how i was just like man how does he do this i do this like once or twice a year and i hate it and you were doing this shit like every, <laughs> every week. week like did you build did you build all that stuff yourself yes. I, I had actually i had a friend to build the the uh the countertops for okay. me but everything else were like on tables man and then you know we got the tents and Trust me, when, when I go at it, I go. It's a process. 
But you ha- one thing about it, you have to love to do this because if you don't, what you part will- about setting up do you love? Because you, you you can't love it that much. I, I love the way I, the banners and everything stick out and, and, and represent. I stand back okay. and look at it and say, Ah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's me. That's what I do, okay. you know. So when I got a great shot, a picture up there, or, or the other food, what I've done, I think I'm, I'll be a- the end result. Yeah, but and when, when it comes to cleaning up, oh hell no. So yeah. Go, yeah, you delegate that part. Yo, take care of that. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's really impressive, man, to see you, like, literally construct a kitchen and a storefront and then break it down then go somewhere else the next weekend and do it all over again. Now, that's that's something that I personally could not do. But, I mean, you, you said you started at a really young age doing that, so yeah. it's kind of something. So you saw the progression, and then it's like, when I saw your banner, I was like, this is like one of those barbecue festivals. Like, right. And so have you ever competed? Have you ever thought about competing? I competed uh, one time, but okay. I don't really. That's not your thing. No, it's not. I don't care about all that big trophy. And, you know when you go to festivals and you see the guy that has like 50 trophies. And right. He's like, and I go taste their food. It's like, you won you, what? You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was probably in some. In the middle right. of. Nowhere. Yeah, I, I just don't really care for that. I just want to, hey. Make good food. Make good food. Hey, come check me out. Yeah. Make money. Right. You know, it's a survival game. And, and bro, like, you actually really do ha- have great food. Because actually the first time I went, this is before you met me, to me it went and got some food for me so I could taste it. Cause I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Yeah, I, I saw you hiding over there. <laughs> it was just Saint Charles. I saw you. Yeah, over it was. Just, I was like, well, where is he? Well, Daddy, I don't know. Girl, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Bring him over. I don't care. I cared though. I was. I was nervous, man. No, I didn't, you had to be I, nervous. I wasn't ready yet. I wasn't ready for that. But no. I mean, when I tasted your food, I was like, damn. I want to. I want to meet him. I want to go talk to him. But we did that later. So. When you set, when you when you start setting up when you when did you stop the festivals and go to Woodson and Olive, I mean not Page Woodson and Page. Page. Well, <clears throat> it actually started doing that first. Okay. And then the festivals came along because some friends of mine would say, "Hey, you need to get in these events." And then I jumped in and started. It. Okay. But I always would go back to that to, one spot. Yeah, Three of a Kind. Shout out to Three of a Kind out three there. Three of a Kind. Yes. Yeah, that was the did they, and they didn't have food. <clears throat> no, they have food. Okay. They served uh, fish and chicken and stuff like that, but they wouldn't open up until the evening. Okay. So and you just did all I day. I did all mine all day. Yeah. So by the time 5 o'clock came, we were like doing their thing. So Okay. But uh, yeah, cuz I I remember pulling up on you over there a lot and then so I remember, and then when I met you, you, that's when you were talking about, you know, you wanted to actually have a space and, like, just stop doing this every weekend. Right. Nobody wants to grow old doing that. No. Like, that's, that's hard work. So when you, you finally got the, um, would you would you call yourself a pit master? Do you ever call yourself that? Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I don't actually feel what? like... Is there a certain thing that you have to do to become that? Because, you know, a lot, of they, a lot of times people will call themselves chef. Mm-hmm. And they're not a chef. Right. You know what I mean? Well, after so many years in discovering and under, understanding your grill, the, the fire, knowing how to control the temperature of it, it's, it takes some time and, and some burns. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> but, some burnt food. And study you. You know, you just can't go out and throw it on the grill and... I see guys do that. Just throw the meat on the grill and let it cook all day. It's like, oh, that's because it's electric. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, this is, we doing straight up, actual cherry wood, charcoal mix. And I sit out there and I just control it. But you have to keep turning. You have to just study it. You got to, you got to, yeah, take good care <laughs> of the food. Because if you don't, I look at it like, you know. Back yeah, the nobody's going to come back. So. I have to make sure the food is great, and I stay out there on that grill until it's, I know it's right. Yeah, that's dedication, man, and it and it, it comes across in your food for sure. Your your rib tips, I've never in, tasted anybody else's rib tips. I like like yours, man. Like thank you. They're not full of fat, and you know you the fat just cooks away, and you're left with this meat. Like right. it's just really impressive. If you haven't like gone to his spot, well, let's talk about it, man. So you. It's in the, right now it's at the Antique Mall. Yeah, we're in the Antique Mall, uh, 
10431 St. Charles Rock Road, next door to Big Lots. We have the, uh, it's an old Snooks building. Right. And so we took over that little area, the and that's, kitchen Is area. that Bridgeton? No, actually that's St. Anne. St. Anne, okay. <clears throat> and we, uh, we do all the cooking outside, smoke the meat, the green beans, mac and cheese, uh, the baked beans, corn, Man. and we serve on the inside. Making me hungry. <laughs> I know Stu's over there hungry as hell. Shout out to my producer over there eating some, t- some red hot ripplets. <laughs> You should have ate, man. <laughs> well, you had two chefs. You probably thought there was going to be some food. Well, in there. I thought it was going to be some chicken when I walked through the door. We here at St. Louis Chicken Company. Yeah, well, you know. St. Louis Cotton Chicken Diaries. Right. No chicken. chicken. No the, chicken. The connection to Chicken Diaries is me owning a chicken restaurant. So, anyway. So, you're in St. Anne in the strip <clears throat> uh, where the Schnooks used to be. Now, it's an antique mall. Right. And there's a kitchen attached. Well, there's like a, a kitchen front. Front. And then your grills are outside. Right. We have the grill on the, on the trailer, 300-gallon uh, trailer. I mean, yeah. pit. And we do all of it out there. And then you bring it in and then serve it. we bring it, it in and serve it. All yeah. right. So I, I don't know who told me, but I heard that they're, like, changing the antique mall into something. Yeah, they're turning it into a weed dispensary. No shit. Yes. So... So not, that means that means that you're gonna do great business. <laughs> that means we we have to move, but but we're moving across the parking lot. Okay, into a smaller uh, building. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing that I do now. It just it's always it's gonna be to go. There's no coming in. It's at the window, and we're closer to the St. Charles Rock Road, so People you can, can be seen. See, yeah, because. Where we are now, it's kind of it's, ducked off. Yeah, in the back, but now we're gonna. You can see us. Okay, we're gonna be right next, uh, up front by the marquee. Okay, so right by <clears> the <throat> uh, right by St. Charles Rock Road. Yeah, about <clears throat> excuse me, about two hundred feet from the. Okay, something but like it's, that. But it's it's it's, it's visible, more visible. Because <clears throat> right. right now you you don't have a lot of signage out there. No, all I have is I have a new one now. Okay, it's on the marquee. Okay, yeah, it's right. White and got the red and black letters. So wait a minute, they're barbecue. turning they're turning the antique mod to a dispensary. Right. Well, they have one part of the building now. Are they selling weed out of there now? They're gonna grow it, sell it, and whatever they do, they're doing all of it. They're gonna hire two hundred people what? to work there. Yeah. So every time you come in to get weed or go to big lots, you pass yeah. me. Man, that's so, what's up. So that's a, that's good, right? It's a win-win, I think. Okay. So, so you're not taking that as like an L. Like, you're looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to it because, like I said, when people come in, you, you don't really see us. Yeah. You kind of always have to be it. coming there for you. you know, right. Or, Banners and flags yeah, and all doing that. all that that's, stuff. No, when, you, when we get up the street here. No, it's gonna so be there's going to be a lot of traffic because exactly. weed <laughs> is very popular. Exactly. I don't smoke weed. I haven't smoked weed in maybe... Five years, but I mean everybody else that I know in the world does. So oh, you're gonna get a bunch of stoners, stoners, and then when they they get high, they gonna want to eat. They're gonna want to eat. And then there's a bar next door, so oh, I'm a man. win-win. It's a one-stop <laughs> shop. You just pull up on that lot and just leave the next day. That's what's up, man. So yeah. when when do you think that's gonna happen? We're gonna try to open the August first. Okay. So, so right now we're gonna stay running where we are. We until uh, mid July. And then we're going to shut down and transfer everything up. So, like, in the mid-July, that's when you're going to move up yeah, to the, okay. Right, because the last day is July 31st. Okay. That's cool, man. So, you <laughs> so, got, so that's, I mean, that's something, that's definitely something to look forward to. I'm, I'm actually excited about that. Oh, trust me, I am. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready to go now because I already painted <laughs> the building. I'm serious. I'm ready well, to go what's now. What's stopping you? Well, the health department and oh, so yeah. on. Okay, and all so right. On all that so paperwork and all, all, that, that, all the hoops you got to jump the, through. Yeah, exactly. All the hoops that you jumped, you just got to jump exactly. through. Exactly. Oh. All that I just you went got, through, now I got to do it all, all over, over again. again. It's oh, crazy. Oh, man. I I don't, yeah, I wouldn't look forward to that part. Oh, I don't. I got a meeting tomorrow night. <laughs> Every t- I've been trying to get you on my show for like three months now, and you always got something to do. Yeah. And I'm like, man, this either he's hesitating about coming on here, or he's really that damn busy, or both. <laughs> it's probably both. It was both. Yeah. Well, I've just been busy, and like you said, I've been like, ah, I don't want to be on the Ah, I don't yeah, want to. Yeah. What is he going to talk about? Ah, I don't know. <laughs> then I keep watching this. Oh, everybody's getting drunk. All right. Speaking of that. One, one oh, more. here we go. Yeah, man, you, I'm drinking water. You're drinking half a shot. <laughs> We're not getting you drunk tonight. 
I might. All right. I, you, I usually leave here feeling pretty damn good. But you know what? <laughs> I'm in Rock Hill, and all these cops eat here for free, so they don't pull me over. And if Ooh, they do, good. they just say, go home, Bobby. Or they'll. It hasn't happened yet, so cheers good. to that. Cheers. All right, cheers. <laughs> I've never been that drunk. Woo! Two! Oh, two. I'm, I'm at four. <laughs> Who's on here watching? Mom, two. are you watching? Mom, all right, I think my mom's on here. Romeo's, Romeo's a fly guy. Hey, well, you know. Sometimes, like, I really feel like I got to dress up just to be around <laughs> him. Like, I got to go put on something, like, f- flashy so I can, like, stand next to him and, and look cool. I got a picture of him and I at a graduation, and he's got on this white suit with this purple tie and his <laughs> shirt and his hat. And these white shoes, and I'm just like, man, this guy's clean. <laughs> there. Hey, you know, when we were coming up, the men back then dress. You know, I didn't really wear jeans and stuff in, in high school. We was, I put it like this. We would watch the group that came out called The Time. And we would watch how they were, you know, what they were wearing. And I was like, man, I want I gotta look cool like that, man. Let's talk about Moore's Day. Hey. Let's talk about you. I think hey. I think you are his number one fan. Hey, man, I love that group and I love him and Jerome. They just when they came out with uh, cool, I said that's me, man. I came a little bit after that, but I remember it. Yeah, and then the movie Purple Rain came out. Oh, they man. came out with Jungle Love. Man, Purple Rain. Oh, yeah. And then they came out with the Bird. Yeah. So me and my boy. <laughs> baby, love you up in the D, baby. We toured St. Louis when they had putting on the hits. Uh huh. We would go to every club that had the contest, and, and we would, we would win everywhere we went. Dancing, dancing, lip syncing to the time. Who was Morris Day? My buddy. Okay. Right. And you had the Stop. mirror. I was Jerome. Well, I am Jerome. <laughs> you are <What> Jerome. Mean? <laughs> I, I'm Jerome. <laughs> and we actually had the mirror from the movie. Cause I yeah I know you you have that mirror it's yeah. the same one that he had yes my uh, mother I, I we used to take it off her wall it was the she had the same one the same mirror how so ironic that, is that oh, it was I thought, crazy I thought you planned that no I thought no. you went out and like found that I came home I just came home I came home for two years then and we were touring dancing I said man I gotta get a mirror I need a mirror I looked in the wall I said oh taking that. And, and it was the, the same mirror. Same mirror. And we would go to every club. we go to this main club every Saturday. No, it was every Tuesday. It was called Club Celebration. Okay. East St. Louis. Never been. When we walked in the door, we were dressed like the time. Right. And we saw our competition and we looked at them like we did in the movie. Uh-huh. Like, <laughs> we laugh at them. There was guys who was doing James Brown. They was doing Michael Jackson. Uh-huh. They were doing Prince. But when we hit that floor, <laughs> yeah, boy, the music went on, and they were doing it. Man, I, I man, I, and there were no video cameras. No, it wasn't no, none of that back then. Oh, it was just man. if you had a camera, it was one of those uh, old old school old, portable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man, I bet that was fun. Oh, it was man, we had so much fun doing that. I bet you like think about that all the time. Every weekend we would go get paid doing what we do. That's what's up, man. So, and because when I met you, I'm like, this guy's the biggest Morris Day fan, and I I learned about Morris Day I think from Purple Rain, mm-hmm. and then I've, I've I've seen him do his thing, and you ended up on stage with him a few years ago. Well, I've been up there with him maybe five times. When they actually went on tour to come back out after breaking up from Prince. Okay. It was 1997, us maybe want to say. They came to Mississippi Nights here in St. Louis. Down on the land. I was the first one in line. I bet you were. I had the mirror. <laughs> okay, and the suit. And the suit. You no know, doors open. I walked in and went right up front by the stage and sat there. I just, just wait. <laughs> the smoke's coming out. Next you hear it go. They come walking out, Jelly Bean, Jimmy J. Well, not just Jimmy J, but they all come out, put it that way. And then uh, Jerome walked out. I was like, like this with the mirror. He came over, took the mirror from me. Did? And he said, I'm going to use this in the show. I said, damn, okay. That's After the cool. show was over, 
before the show was over, he pulled me up on stage. We, I danced with him doing the bird. Okay, and you knew the dance. I knew the dance. Yeah. He was like, just do what you do. Right. I was just following them. I was just, hey. Right. You know, and uh, after the show was over, we went backstage. We sat there and talked, and I told him, you know, how I've been following them all these years. And right. Morris was like, hey, what's up, brother? Man. And then he said, you won't believe what my name He said, Jerome. I said, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of figured it because how you look. us owning restaurants and finding help nowadays is like it's just impossible i was talking to you before we started filming about me hiring two guys that never started they never showed up interviewing people or trying to set up interviews they don't show um i think like a lot of the restaurants i mean everybody's saying oh well people are just living on unemployment i think it's i think it's not only that but i think that when covid happened right and restaurants were at limited capacity or shut down like mine was those furloughed workers went to work at Amazon, UPS, yes, FedEx, yes, yes. Uh, the post office. Mm-hmm. So when restaurants started opening back up, they're like, hell with that. I don't want to go back and do that. I right. think I think we lost a lot of restaurant workers to these other industries. To Amazon, for sure. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think I everybody says that it's because of unemployment, but I I think that a, a lot of it has like to do with like the shift in, in uh, just jobs, period. They were paying better. Yeah, they weren't. They offer more money. Oh, more money, yeah. health insurance, you know, and stuff that we that we can't offer because we have a certain budget that we have to stay in, and we can't pay people sixteen dollars an hour. No, it's, trust me, it's really hard to do that. And but so now but, I'm at that point where I got I need a couple of cooks, man. It's just going to come in. I know I'm about to pay a little extra. Yeah, that's reliable. Mm-hmm. That understands and knows, me and do it me my yeah. way. Yeah. Because my, that's my name. Who are you telling? I, that's my name up there. So don't do it your way. If right. I get people like that can understand that, I believe that uh, in your case, too, we'd be very... We'd be good. We'd be good. We wouldn't be stressed out all the time. It's a trip. I'm telling you. Now I'm trying to staff this uh, event for 4th of July weekend. It's three days. You better and, get your kids out there. Oh, <laughs> I am. Okay. <laughs> they on their way home. <laughs> I, I, I might be there. What day is it? What day is 4th of July on? <clears throat> it's a Sunday, so we got Friday, Saturday. Sunday. I'm closed on Sundays. I might come help you out, man. Hey, hey, man. And I do know what I'm doing. That's what's important. I, got, I want somebody to go and say, hey, here's the plan. You know what to do. I ain't got to keep watching you, man. worrying about you over portioning. You know, right, those exactly. are the type of things that I. Yeah. <laughs> you do it too. Uh, you know? I, all the time. All the time. Because people I, will say, I can come do this. I'm like, no, you can't. No. <laughs> you need to be trained to do it the way we do it here. And, you know, somebody said to me one time, I'll never forget this. This guy said, it's not rocket science. I'm like, no, but it's wing co science. Exactly. It's my science. That's how you put it. It's not rocket science. No, it's not rocket science. I don't care if you worked at Popeye's and Uncle Bill's and Applebee's for the past 15 years. You haven't worked here. Exactly. So that's the same thing. So this is a Romeo way. Or you hit the highway. Period. It's just. But then you got to be kind of nice about it because you don't want them to get mad and quit. So it's kind of. I know. <laughs> you got to be nicer to people nowadays. Back oh when I was coming God. up, the chef used to curse me out. Yes. And I would just feel like I was this tall and I would just. My whole day would be ruined because I made the chef mad. Right. Now it's like you make somebody mad, they're like, F this, I'm out of here. Yeah, or they go on to do other crazy shit. Now everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Right. Everybody, it's not cool anymore <clears throat> to have a job. Have you noticed that? Like, uh, yeah. Like, it's not cool anymore to have a job. It's like it. The only people that are winning, like, cause like the guys that have regular jobs, they're not getting the girls they want, and so they got to figure out a way to hustle. They got to be the CEO of something, and most of the time, the shit doesn't work because they don't know what they're doing. Right. 
but like it's not but this world needs workers not everybody's meant to be the boss if right. they knew what we went through every day, <laughs> yes, and we go home and still go through it, thinking about the next day and the next weekend, ain't that amazing? That when you go to sleep, we don't get off. We never, <laughs> we're never off work. We're never off work because you could be playing with the kids or doing this, and in the back of your mind, you're thinking about like, damn, I gotta put these things in a smoker. I gotta marinate this. Exactly. I gotta, you know, it's just it's or how am I gonna do this? Or I gotta the cost of beef or the co- exactly. You, your brain never it's, turns it's, off. And my wife look at me and she be like, uh, can we talk about something else besides barbecue? <laughs> I said, baby, I'm sorry. Shout out to you, Brittany. Hey, Brittany, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Brittany. She's a trooper, man. And it's like, I never met anyone like her in my life. She's dope, She man. has my back 100%. She does. And I, I, I applaud to her all For the real. time. She's a great mother. Amazing. She's a great Amazing. wife. Um, and she can cook. Oh, she can cook. She can cook. She can cook. Is she the one behind that spaghetti salad, or is that you? Well, I'm going to say both of us, but I did it this weekend. <laughs> but Brittany, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Whose recipe is that? Because I remember calling her. <clears throat> I called her like a year ago. I was like, Brit, I need the recipe. Because every time I go to your house, mm. you have that. <laughs> and it's like I've never seen a cold spaghetti salad. I've seen like pasta salad, right. but not the spaghetti. Yeah. And then there's, it's like orange. It's got like this certain seasoning. I'm like, what the, what is that <laughs> shit? I, 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 we're not going to say it out loud, loud, but I, I have the recipe. <laughs> and I went to look for that spice. And I, I like, I, I called her. I'm like, Brittany, I can't find this anywhere. She's like, keep looking, Bobby. It's there. And it was, it was hidden. But there's other stuff that goes into it. Bro, that's that. That's, it's it's a, a recipe that I believe my mother got it from her brother. Okay, so it came from your mom. That that's how that's how I learned. That's how it came to Romeo's. Yeah, right. That's okay. how I learned it. Okay. And and I see my uncle make it too. So I, well, between them, they know the the okay. original person that started it. That, okay. That in the family. All right. So, so it's so a, it's, it's a family recipe. Right. But we eat it a lot during the summer. It's a summer dish. Summer, it's a summer dish. For sure. For when I, yeah, when I come to your house, it's always there. And exactly. I look forward to that. Like that, it's just, it's a staple in your house. When you, when you barbecue, you got to have some of that. Right. At least I do. At, at your house. Because you can't have that at every event. No. And no. You, know, you know what I found? And this is a weird thing. That black folks don't like cold pasta as much as white people. Am I wrong? I can't <laughs> speak for them. <laughs> Listen. I don't speak for no. me. <laughs> So I eat cold spaghetti <laughs> pasta salad. Listen, man, when I had when I got that recipe from Brittany and I had some friends over and I'm I barbecued, I made that, I sent Brittany a picture of it, she might have showed it to you. Uh-huh. But my friends put it in a microwave. <laughs> no, no. I, they were black. Yes. Okay. Yeah. They, they <laughs> That's what I'm saying. White people eat cold pasta salad. Well see. <clears throat> Because they saw spaghetti, like, no, nah, I, I, I got to heat this up. No, you don't heat up. I told them they're tripping, <laughs> but they all put it in the microwave. And they ate it? They ate it. I was I'm like, surprised it didn't splatter <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it's, a, it's a really good pasta salad, and maybe we'll drop that picture in here at 44 minutes, Stu, of that spaghetti salad. But yeah, that spaghetti salad is fire, man. So thank you, thank you. You got so tell me like all the different stuff that you got on your menu that rotates, or like what do you what are you known for? We know for our rib tips, for for sure, because I I do my best to try to keep them tender. Yes, sir. We also sell the uh, our barbecue ribs. I do snoops every Saturday. Okay. Just about if the weather's right, it's hard to cook snoops in cold weather or rainy weather. Yes, it is. Trust me, and I learned that through my mother and her her people. They all say the same thing, and it's true. I've never cooked a snoop. Oh, well, I'll show you one. All right. <laughs> because I've never. <laughs> I'll show you one. So we also have, like I said, we have, uh, I have the pulled pork. We got the brisket. Um, we got our barbecue nachos today. I featured a blackened shrimp queso nacho. Okay. It is loaded with queso cheese, shrimp, on the chips, no barbecue sauce, pico. Okay. Little jalapenos. And then I run a special every now and then. I've heard I've had your catfish before. Yeah, too. we have catfish. We uh, 
your wings, wings, which are almost impossible to get right now. <laughs> oh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> I cannot. Oh my god, I, man, wings, that's not me. Wings are so expensive. It's, I want to take them off my menu. You can't even find them in a grocery store. When you do that, twenty dollars yeah. a pack. It's 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 not even worth having them. No, on the that's menu. that's what I'm telling you. It's not even worth it. I I I pay one fifty for a case of wings. I pay yeah, I pay one forty six for a case of wings. And wings used to cost forty bucks. Eleven years ago, <laughs> yeah, ten years ago when I opened the restaurant, I was paying forty dollars a case. Right. And then it went up to sixty. I was like, oh shit. And then it went up to eighty. I'm like, whoa. Yes. And then it kind of hovered around eighty five dollars for the past several years. Right. And then the past eight months, it started going up and going up and going up. I'm like, a hundred and forty dollars. Man, so, I tell you, I, I tell you, I really want to take them off the menu right now. Then you should. I mean, because it is so expensive. You know how many restaurants them. are taking them off the menu and just yeah. not not offering them, period? No, because it's, uh, they're too expensive. Honestly, man, if and you're you, not making no money. No, if you tell somebody that you're out of wings, they're not going to leave. They're going to no, get something gonna, else. Right, they're going to get something else. I wouldn't even worry myself. If you can't serve wings, then just don't serve wings. They'll get a Polish or a... a or get some catfish some, yeah, or some ribs. something else. Baby. They, they'll, they're, they're not going to just leave. Right. I wouldn't even worry about that. Here, if I tell them we didn't have any chicken wings, they would, they would leave. They would leave. Because right. so, it's, it's <laughs> St. Louis wings. Yeah, I can't, I can't just right. not sell chicken wings. So right. you, got, you got a lot of your, uh, your pulled pork. Is that a pork butt or it's a pork shoulder? Butt. No, so I, a butt. I don't use the shoulder. I use the pork butt. And I do eight hours on it. Man. So you don't get that stuff pre-done, nothing. You do all no, that stuff. No, I have to. Do it myself. I mark it, wrap it, and let that baby go. Something like that, I can let go all day. Yeah. I ain't got to worry about that. I go flip it every now and then. Like at the festivals, oh, that's all the grill be full with pork butts. Really? And I just go out there and check it. Flip it, flip it, flip it, flip it. You ever do turkey legs? I do. I do. At the festivals? Mm -hmm. Okay. I sell those. You Um, can get like $15 for one. How much you sell those for? $15. $15. Hell yeah. (laughs) I mean, those things are like as big as your damn arm. Right. $15. Yeah. And and they'll sell out. They they always do. Yeah. (laughs) Always do. Man, those things. I love me a good turkey leg, man. Matter of fact, I had some this weekend we sold. Did you? Yeah. All right. All gone. That's what's up. (laughs) And we also do, uh, I like to do my red beans and rice. I haven't had those. Uh, Not yours. But I like to do the red beans and rice every now and then. So, um, but you have the luck. You can switch it up. You can yeah, like, I, I do. Okay, I, do. I switch it up. I eat either the beans, the green the beans, and beans. But we do greens also. Yeah, collard greens. I've I had like your them. greens, the mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Brittany makes. Brittany makes or made the one that I had. Yeah, she Shout does. Shout out to Brittany again. Yeah, Brittany. Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your mac and cheese slaps. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love that mac and cheese. So <laughs> let me ask you a question, bro. So outside of barbecue, man, like you are not just a barbecue guy. Well, you are now, mm-hmm. but you were a chef at many different places. And yeah. Uh, Bear Star Casino, uh, DB's, uh, Johnny's. Three Monkeys. Three Monkeys. Where I was part owner of that, of a little percentage of it. But I helped build Three Monkeys. I remember when that place first <laughs> opened, man. I was, I, and I didn't, obviously, I didn't know you then, mm-hmm. but I, I was really excited about it because Morgan Ford wasn't developed no. back then. The 7 Eleven no. was still there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if it's Tin even can. there. Tin Can yeah. was just opening or yeah. had been open for like two years. And Stellos was on the other end. And that's it. Yeah. That was all that was there. So now, but now you drive down Morgan Ford and it's just like, there's a loft building. Oh, I heard. Yeah. There's a nice loft. There's all these storefronts. I'm like, holy shit. Because I grew up over there. It was a 7-Eleven and a car wash. Right. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like a dangerous area. Right. And now it's like, it's kind of like it's turned, it's turned into a strip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, Three Monkeys and you, they it, they didn't, it wasn't a barbecue spot. So you were no, like cooking. I, I did actual, I had like, pizzas. Upscale, f- upscale also, dining, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had up, everything. We did a brunch on Sundays. We uh, served breakfast on Saturdays. I pro- I've probably eaten your brunch because I've used to go there for brunch and I didn't know you, but I was in there. Yeah, that brunch was something to put together every Sunday. <laughs> Shit, I've done it. I did. I did it at the country club. <laughs> yeah. And I said, look, after that country club, when I went to a job, went to a job, and if they served brunch, I I either declined the offer. <laughs> or I just said I can't work on Sunday. <laughs> right. Because I hate brunch, man. I hate it so much damn work, and I'm tired. Yeah. I closed the night work. before, 
So I didn't get off work till midnight. Now I got I got to come back at six and set up. Oh, whole, trust me, I know. I was doing this seven days a week. Veggie trays, fruit yes. trays, smoked salmon, bu- mu- uh, muffins and biscuits and gravy like waffles, man. Everything. Omelet station. Yeah, I, I had a guy that had to, I had him out there doing. The you know what? I like doing that though. Oh, I really I, I like doing I omelets. That, yeah. I like because you get to actually talk to people. Yeah. Because as a chef, we don't talk to people much. So when you get to actually interact with people, at least for me back then. It was kind of like a, a break from being stuck in a kitchen all the time. Yeah, I got you. I, I, got, got, to, you. I got to talk to people. So. so I would take the chef jacket out and then go put my tile and go wait tables or I'll go behind the bar. See, I've, I've <laughs> never done that. I, I, I was behind the bar when I was a chef at BB's downtown. Mm-hmm. Um, you ever been to BB's, the jazz blues and stuff? Yeah, yeah. I was their first chef. So the red, oh, okay. the red beans and rice on their menu is my recipe from when I was 18 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's still uh, on the menu now. Nice and then uh, their turkey sandwich with the tarragon mayonnaise, that's mine. The uh, the Anyway, so yeah, when I was a chef at BB's, and I would go there, and I would... I, I was 18. They thought I was 21. I, <laughs> I did that. Too. Yeah, I, I faked my birth certificate, because back then it was, it was kind of easier to do. And I was serving drinks. Robin... Uh, Robin something... Robin Smith from Channel 4. Oh, okay. She used yeah. to come in there... Like once a week on a Thursday at 4 p.m. and get a double scotch and an order of sweet potato fries. Wow. And I would serve, I would pour the scotch. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But and she was just like, oh, yeah, that's enough. Baby. Right. I'm like, all right, cool. Of course. Yeah. Yes. And then, then she would just pay me and leave. And I was like, oh, man, I just served Robin Smith a, a drink. But I, <laughs> you know, so yeah, that was fun. But I've never really hustled at a bar and, and mm-hmm. i know that you spent some time at uh like the stadiums yeah, bartending I, well down at uh the what is it called the, now they Enterprise, changed the name a million Enterprise times Enterprise. where the blues play where the blues play i'm a bartender there and they do concerts they do and i would do concerts yes but do you still do that i haven't went i went back once because they haven't really COVID. had they haven't had many concerts no the, everything's gonna start back up next year okay i think i'm gonna continue doing it for a while it's good I money. love doing it. It's fun. It's good money. But when I went back, with end of well, I can't say COVID is over, but they had once to, things started opening back right. up, it was not the same. Okay, it was because people are weird about being right. really close to each other now. You don't know if it's okay. Yeah, it you was don't know. Weird. It was weird. Just I went to the baseball game uh, a couple weeks ago, and then I went to patios afterwards, and there wasn't a mask in sight. And I was like, I don't know if this is cool, <laughs> right? Or if it's just if, if things are back to normal. But there's <laughs> there's four hundred people and not one mask. And I'm like, I was like, I guess it was just kind of weird because you the past year and a half you've just have been haven't been used to being close to somebody. No, and it, I, I would notice like when I get close to like somebody in a grocery store, they'll look at me like, Why are you so close? I'm like, I'm th- I'm only three feet away from you. So like the whole world is just weird. I don't know, but you were bartending. At the, I guess, Enterprise Center, that's what it's called now. Yeah. When I went to a concert there, I went to a Post Malone concert with my yeah. son. Yeah. And I went to see you at the bar that you were working at. And I, that was like, that was like literally right before uh, COVID happened. It was. It was. In, it was in February or the beginning of March. And then mid March is when everything just shut down. Right. And the weirdest thing about that, we opened in COVID. You the did. The restaurant. Yeah. Yes. You did. We opened right when it was everything was going crazy. I know a couple people that did that, and you're one of those people. Because to me, it told me she was like, "Yeah, my dad's opening the spot," and I was like, "When?" And she said, "Like in a, in a month." I'm like, "It was just you opened right in the middle of all right. the, it all was, those." It was crazy. Yeah, but it had its moments, and it still has its moments. But when it when it's popping, it's popping. I man, you, you got and good. We made it through. This past year, it was just amazing. Honestly, I'm, I think that if we look back on our lives in a few years from now, we'll we'll be able to say we made it through COVID. Right. I, I hope I hope we're able to say that. I'm hoping. We can. <laughs> right. Exactly. Because <laughs> if you can make it through what we're going through now right. and still prevail, you're damn good at what you do. Yeah. Because this will this will cripple you. It's been many times I've been like. This ain't worth it. This ain't, yeah, this, <laughs> this is, I'm not, worth it. I'm not going to let this place kill me. Right. I say that all the time. I told my producer, I said, I'm not going to let that place kill me. Exactly. I'll go back to corporate America. I'll go wait tables. Hey. I'll, I mean, I'll do something, but I, I'm not going to stress out. But then I keep stressing out. I can't, I can't, I got a, a brand I can't just let go. 
Right, I so understand. So it's just like I, I, I got to save this brand from going away. So if we make it through this, I, I think that we can definitely say that we, we've been through some shit. Yes. Because yes. this, this has been some crazy times, man. So um, have you ever barbecued anything that just was a disaster or a dish that failed or something? It's like, you know oh, what? Oh, that happens. I mean, does yeah. anything stand out in your mind? Like, uh. <laughs> anything in particular or no? Uh, some rib chips one time. That I had left on the grill. Okay. I come back, the whole damn grill's on fire. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I, and I'm when I open the top, flames shooting out at me. Oh damn! I'm like, well, them gone. <laughs> <laughs> you lost those, right? I, there, all right. There's a one question I really wanted to ask another chef, and I want to ask. I want to ask as many chefs as possible. Mm-hmm. You know how when you cook a duck breast, you can serve it medium rare. Right. right, you can slice it and it'll be pink inside. Right, why can't you eat chicken like that? Because chi- chicken has. Uh, I, I'm gonna tell you what I think. Because I, I somebody asked me this question one time, and that was like the first time in my career that I kind of felt stupid because I didn't know how to properly answer that question. I, because it has salmonella. So it's, but it's it's a it's poultry. Yeah, so does but duck. with chicken, you gotta cook it all the way. You just, I was, I was standing on if you. <laughs> That's what Black I said. People, I just said just because. They, we want our chicken cooked. I would never eat raw chicken. No. But I would eat a medium rare duck breast. But see, I'm not a duck fan. But you, I cook it. Though. But you understand that but you I can understand. eat it yeah, you medium can eat rare. It. Yeah, I understand. And so when somebody asked me, they're like, well, and it's not that they wanted raw chicken or anything right. by any means. They just asked me, why can you eat duck raw but not chicken? I was like, why the fuck would you want to eat raw chicken? Right. But then again, I'm thinking, well, I've eaten rare duck I don't see much difference in that but that's just a chef question that I don't think many people can really answer without just saying just because it's like <laughs> yeah, it's just because just because just because and like wh- why did you ask me that question in the first place that's what <laughs> so like you said you play the drums like what else is is there anything about you that that I don't know like I know that I know that you like as a previous life has some connection to Kid Rock and I thought that was really cool like yeah, you, yeah. you knew his sister or something yeah. I was like holy shit like I was such a a big fan of Kid Rock like he was he he was just a badass yeah like, me and uh, his sister we dated okay got engaged actually back and in 91 92 I guess that makes sense because you're from Detroit right. so and it was weird because I was bartending at a one of the places where the Detroit Lions come hang out at. Okay. And she was hanging out with these guys, and then I, one of my friends introduced me to her, and we hung out, and we dated, and then she said, oh, my, I have a brother, and he had this high-top fade. So I'm he like, wasn't, like, no, famous he was, then? he wasn't famous at that time. But he was touring with groups, rap groups and stuff. It was, it was like, wow, you know, this and guy going to be something. And then he became... And then he became... Were you guys still dating when he got... No, no, I was gone. Okay. This was over a long time ago. Well, when your daughter... He got, he got rich. I mean, rich. He got uh, famous. And rich. And rich. <laughs> yeah. That's a, um, in 2000. Okay, so a couple years this, after you and his sister did Yeah, that out. was that was like nine, eight years later. Man, because when, when, when uh, Tamiya told me about that, I was like... I was, I was, I don't know. I, I was such a big fan of Kid Rock. I didn't know his grind like you right. did, but yeah. I just saw him as a superstar, and I'm like, damn, that is so cool. Yeah, he was a badass there. Yeah, yeah. And then he just, he was, and he's still a badass. I mean, I think he's a Trump supporter, which I don't like, but yeah, huh? we're not gonna get, <laughs> we into, get into that. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, if you were sitting in my seat and could ask Romeo a question or two? Cause and driving over here, anticipating like, what is he gonna ask me? What, are, why am I coming on this show? Like, what does he want to know? <laughs> like, what do you, what do you, what would you want to ask yourself? Or do can you think of anything that you want to? I always ask people that, and they never can think of anything. Mm. Huh? No, nothing that really mean, comes to mind. But when you leave here, you'd be like, man, he could ask me this or that. Well, there's something you don't know, but do you want to say it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure okay. there's a lot that I don't know, but well, and you know, my life I've been entertainment and chef, so I will cook in the day and I dance at night. Okay. So, in my 20s and 30s, I was you know buffed and tough, and you know, I used to dance, and I made money. At it. 
<laughs> Wait a minute. Did we just did did we just uh, did, yeah. I, did I hear you right? Yes, sir. I was exotic. And then dancing. Ex- exotic dancer. Yes, that is something I didn't and know. And my card said Romeo. Anytime, you had a card any place anywhere. It was my in the man paper in, De- in Detroit. And the river, their thing called the Riverfront Times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their yeah. their version of the Riverfront Times. You were on the back of it. I'm on the back of it. My <laughs> name right there, Triple A. <laughs> my first gig <laughs> was a was a, a bar, uh, beauty salon. I um, like. I'm like. Dude told me this is where you want to go and blah blah blah. I went there and did my thing. I'm like, oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. But you did you? But I did. You did it. I did it. But I got my money and walked out the door. So I said, I'm tired of working for this guy. <laughs> I put my own name out there and do my own thing. I go in for 15 minutes, make 125 dollars. Oh man, I can't stop. Did it went up from there. <laughs> Danced in Canada. You you were an exotic dancer. Yeah. And and you went to Canada. I danced over there too. Cause well, that's right across the way from Detroit, right, Windsor. Yeah. Damn, man, that, that's that's definitely it was something, good money, man. Trust that's something I didn't know. But again, you have to be able to dance. I first of all, I've never <laughs> I've never been that in shape, and I can't dance. So oh, there wow. you go. Wow. My, my my career as an exotic dancer, <laughs> I don't think I'll ever make it. Yeah. Oh. I don't think anybody want to pay for this. <laughs> <laughs> Even in my twenties, I, I, I still had I still had all this going on. Like, this has been there since I was thirteen. So, wow, you're doing a lot better than me these days. <laughs> I tell you, oh, shit, but I'm... it was uh, it was some good times. Some good times. I remember <laughs> this one chick, big lady. Okay. <laughs> And you had to entertain her. I had to entertain her. <laughs> <laughs> and she picked me up. Oh, shit. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you're there to entertain her and she picked you up. She picked me up. I'm like, oh, my God. Then she dropped me. I said, that's it. <laughs> Damn, man. I, that's, but I continued. That was a hell of a story. But, so you had to stay professional. Yeah, I was. You had to keep your... I never talked to any of the women. In there, never outside of the entertainment. I do my show and I'm gone. They don't hear from me again. I don't hear from them. Romeo, and that's they man. told somebody else. I got a uh, bachelor party, a bachelorette party. I need. How long did you do this for? Ten years. You did this for ten years? Yeah, because I was also dancing on a TV show up there called The Scene and Contempo. It was like Soul Train. We go in on Fridays and film the live show Friday. All right. And then it would- an hour later, we will film. All the shows for the following week. Okay. So they come on in the evening every day, except Sunday. Wow, that is something I didn't know about you. So with the, which explains why you're still able to dance, right? And why you're still passionate about it. Because right. like I like I just I just thought you were just a guy that just liked to dance. No, I've been doing. I didn't this know that you actually life. got paid for. I got paid to dance. Well, hell, man, I learned something <laughs> new every day. That's crazy, man. <laughs> we were hit. Uh, we would leave the Contempo show, go down to Studio Fifty Four. In Detroit and and and, and work. hang out because all the dancers were there and then we go out we like there'll be celebrities everybody coming up to us yeah. they watch us every day on of course TV. so yeah you were part of that scene like then, yeah. that's what's up man then I moved on to a new show it was called uh, Too Hot okay and it was it was real popular that's cool man so, I bet so those I mean we'll never have those days back but I, I mean no. we, we look back on those those times of our lives like damn man. You know, you sound like the old guy, like, well, back in the day, I used to do this and that, and like, but those days were like probably the best times of our life. Oh, I had. And until we get new times, that right. are, you know, this is so I did. Different. There is something I want to ask you before we get off of here. I'm I'm 42 now, and you're 56 something. All right, 50 something. <laughs> you know, 50, 50 something. How, what was it like having young children in your late 40s? Like, it was. It was. Uh, it was. Cause I'm terrified. I got a 19 year old son. It was exciting son. to me because I always wanted a, a child, and I ended up having a few. Yeah. <laughs> but I always wanted. Were you scared to be like? How old were you when uh, when Justin was? Isn't he the oldest? Yeah. Um, shit, I think I was 40. Something. Something. 40, yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mid 40s. Yeah. Were you scared to death? Like, how am I going to chase Again, a toddler around? Right. 
Well, they keep me young, I tell you that. They, okay. They, they keep me running. All right. <laughs> so I, I, but I wasn't, I wasn't too nervous about it. It was just like, okay, hey, I got another baby. That Let's scares me, man. Baby. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I could go through that again. My, got another I, Romy. I, my, yeah, see? Yeah, another Romy. Yeah, and I, I've always, I always thought, yeah. like, because my son has, like, grown and, like, done his thing, and then I would have to start all over again. That I'm kind of just nervous about that. So I did want to ask you, like, how that was. Because I have a uh, this, my friend who's a lieutenant over here in uh, Rock Hill. Right. And he's in his mid-50s, and he's got a four-year-old. I'm like, well, how? It, I tell you, it's exciting to you. And I'm quite sure everybody got their own, you know, way about how it changes you. But I tell you, it'll change you. And for the better. For the better. Okay. Um, and then you look at yourself looking into him. Okay. Or her, or whatever. I always wonder like what I would be like as a, like a in my in my age now like having a, a young kid, like you do, and like I see you interact with them, and it's just like it's I, it's just natural. I guess it's just like a normal yeah situation. I mean, yeah. it's not like you're an old ass man, but I just because we had kids when we were younger in like our twenties, right? And then you you fast forward twenty years and you do it again. It's like see, I didn't have I didn't have no kids in the twenties, so okay, it was all fresh to me. All right, well, I was I was I guess I was like twenty four when oh, I had okay. mine, but I I don't know. There's so much time has gone by, and I just like sometimes like can't picture myself with the, but I I miss because I, I miss him when he was four. But you got to do that all over again. That's what's up, man. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So, what, like, tell me what the future, like, what, like, do you have these future plans or anything? Like, right now, I guess it's just waiting for August. Waiting for August. Uh, got a trailer. Finna dope it out. Tell me about that real quick before yeah. we go. Like, that, I saw you bought this red trailer. That yeah. was you ready to turn it into a, a, a concession stand. Okay. Trailer. Uh, Are you going to put, like, kitchen equipment in I there? I will put some in there. But right now, we're going to use the other one until we get to that point. But eventually, it's going to be that. Down the road, um, what made you get that idea? Or did you just get to see a good deal? Remember when you said you like you don't like cleaning, tearing down, breaking up? Right. But, okay. Darn it! <laughs> that trailer gonna pull up and just open up. Open up. Okay. And then when it's time to go, I drive off. Okay. Not have to break down banners and. Okay. It, it, it makes it so convenient. And then if it's raining, you're inside. We're inside. Okay. And if it's cold or hot, you're inside. We're inside. All right, well, that makes all the sense in the world because I didn't. I wanted to ask you that about that on the show because I was going to call you, be like, why did you buy? Right. And yeah. I, I, you, you went live yeah. with that, and I didn't watch it on purpose because I wanted to talk to you personally, like, why is he buying this trailer? And you just explained it. Yeah. So you can do all that mobile. Still stay mobile, you know. But have it. Conf- more. Yeah. Put it like this, I'm making it comfortable for me. Right. Because. Like you said, I ain't getting no younger. Yeah. So, and it, it takes a lot on you sometimes. It takes me a couple of days just to regroup for the next week. <laughs> yeah, who you telling? <laughs> yeah, man, after two, a, two days off, it's like, it's a blessing. It because is. Because to go hard, I go hard when I do this. And I'm quite sure you yeah. do the same. So when you get the day off, I just like, Phew. so this is making it a little bit more easier for me. With that's true. All right. Well, that's I didn't know what you because I was like it has to do something with food. He's not. Oh, all, yeah. He's not putting horses in here. No. He's, he's not. He, he doesn't have a race car. He's not no. like a, like dragging motorcycles now. No. So he's gonna t- he's gonna do something with food with this right. trailer. Exactly. All right. Yeah. So you're gonna turn it into like a, a concession, concession trailer. Trailer. Yes. And all you gotta do is just probably throw a banner up or just put or wrap the. Well, I'm have it wrapped. Wrapped. So. Yeah. Oh, so you just pull up in the truck and then drive off. Yeah. Well, that's, so that's all in. It works. Okay, know. well, I'm looking forward to that. That's what's up, man. Yeah. I'm proud of you, man. Like Thank I've seen you, I've seen you come a long way, and I know that, you, like, when you first came to my house in my little apartment, you were probably, you were probably thinking, like, man, this this dude's supposed to be a boss, and I pull up and he's in this <laughs> little two bedroom apartment, but like you got, like, it was just me for a long right, time, and right. like I was just grinding, 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 trying to get this restaurant open, oh, yeah. and. I, I was every day. I hated that place. I hated living there because I'm like I'm just going crazy in this little tiny apartment. But it just this restaurant was way more important than that. Exactly. I'm just going yeah. there to sleep, right. and I'm coming right back here. And then after a while, I'm like, man, I gotta get the hell out of here. I gotta get some space. So I did get a house. It's all. It's like it's not too far from here. Oh, okay. it's, it's in a bigger space. I got a two car garage. Well, that's good. Got a man. little patio. Yeah. I'm, I don't quite have an 80 inch uh, screen TV like you do, but <laughs> um, you have the biggest 
<laughs> you have the biggest flat screen TV I've ever seen. <laughs> you literally have a movie theater. Well, when they came out with those, I said, I got to have it because I want to act like I'm either at the game or in the movie. And it's a, it's, <laughs> and, yeah, and you did that. You, and it's a good quality TV. I'm like, I remember asking you, like, how big is that? Like, you know, back in the day, it was like, what size motor is that? Or what size are those wheels? Now you're asking people what size their TV is. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for coming on my hey, show. No man. problem, man. We're gonna do it again. Yes. We'll probably come back and you know so, we'll do another show, man. So uh, that's a wrap for the St. Louis Chicken Diaries. We're out here. All right, peace. peace.